Hello everyone and welcome to Dutch Greybeard. On May 11th I picked up Piranesi by Susanna Clarke, one of my intended reads for this year. I spent two days with this book which is small in size but huge in impact. This book is a school example of how an author can spoon feed the reader in order to keep him intrigued and eager to read on. It is very hard to tell you about my reading experience without spoiling anything. So, for once, this is going to be a spoiler-filled video. If you haven't read this book and don't want me to ruin the reading experience for you, please come back to watch this video after you've read the book. Especially for this book, anything is spoiler territory and it is vital that you know as little as possible before you start reading it. Not only is the book set in a maze, the plot of the book is a maze on its own. And with each page the reader advances and can see around another corner. So off we go. The main character is called Piranesi, although we understand from the beginning that this is not his real name. He lives in a place called The House which is a world made up of infinite halls and vestibules lined with statues, all of which are unique. The upper level of the house is filled with clouds and the lower level with an ocean, which follows tidal patterns that Piranesi meticulously tracks. He also charts all of the halls and all of its statues. He believes he has always lived in the house and that there are only 15 people in the world. Thirteen of those are long-dead skeletons. The novel consists of Piranesi's diary entries. Twice a week, Piranesi meets with the other. There are only two living humans in the house. The other is a well-dressed man who enlists Piranesi's help to search for a great and secret knowledge hidden somewhere in the house. He is the one who is named our main character. This name, by the way, refers to the 18th century artist Giovanni Battista Piranesi, who is most famous for his labyrinth drawings. Early in the book, it becomes clear that Piranesi has no memory whatsoever of his life before coming to the house. Two of his journals have been named 2011 and 2012. This strikes me as deeply pedestrian. Also, I cannot remember what happened 2000 years ago. So, at one point he started to name the years after an event, like the year I travelled to the 916th Western Hall, or the year the Albatross came to the South Western Halls, which is the current year. It is intriguing to find out what the house really is, who Piranesi truly is, how he got there, and what the true role of the other is. We really have no clue at the beginning, other than this world of the house is a surrealistic place in a parallel universe, and even that we don't know at the beginning. In fact, this whole book is an exercise in questioning the entire concept of truth. The only thing that struck me as being a little less realistic are a couple of inventorial diary entries like the list of all the people who have ever lived and the overview of all his journals. From that list we can assess that Piranesi has lived in the house for about six years now. It seems a bit odd to me to write down these inventories after six years. One would assume that he had done that already long ago. It's obviously intended for us, the reader, and in the rather confusing beginning it gives us some solid ground which is very welcome. By the way, there are 13 dead persons, Piranesi and the other. Next to these 15, Piranesi acknowledges a 16th person. And you? Who are you? Who is it that I'm writing for? The other is searching for the great and secret knowledge, and one of the required elements for this is to perform a ritual. According to the other, this knowledge is ancient. Once upon a time, people possessed it, and they used to do great things, miraculous things. The other, who doesn't seem to venture in the house, gives Piranesi assignments to chart the house. At one point, 
Piranesi has to admit to himself that he doesn't believe in this great and secret knowledge anymore. When he speaks his mind about this, the other says that they're having this exact same conversation for the third time now. This confuses Piranesi, and he says that this cannot be correct. But the other is adamant. Yes, I'm afraid it is. You see, the labyrinth plays tricks on the mind. It makes people forget things. If you're not careful, it can unpick your entire personality. It becomes clear that the other has access to a world outside of the house. He is only present during their meetings twice a week, and he is always pristinely dressed and groomed. He regularly brings items along for Piranesi, like shoes, a sleeping bag, boxes of matches, a fishing rod, multivitamins, and so on. Stuff that is nowhere provided inside the house. Piranesi does wonder about this. Why is it that the house gives a greater variety of objects to the other than to me? But these kinds of ponderings never go beyond the house. The house provides, and the other is simply not as good in taking care of himself as Piranesi is. The house is valuable because it is the house. It is enough in and of itself. It's not the means to an end. Piranesi is highly naive, up to the point of being completely innocent, but not unrealistically so. He regards himself as the beloved child of the house. Apparently, living in the house for a longer period of time does indeed do something to a person. His only reference of anything other than the house are the statues, and they depict scenes and creatures clearly from another place. Another thing I noticed is the remarkable usage of capitals. The character of Piranesi is reverent of everything around him. He also pays tribute to the skeletons in the house, as if they were still living creatures who need attention. Perhaps the excessive use of capitals for words like wave, doorway, air, staircase and so on is meant to emphasize Piranesi's reverence for all things. The other does not revere the house in the same way I do. Gradually, it dawns on Piranesi that something strange is going on, although at first his complete trust in the house prevents him from diving deeper into these unexplained things. For instance, he finds scraps of paper with handwriting on it that is not his or the other's. Also, after Piranesi explains who person 16 is, the other warns him about this person. It's really important that we keep as far away from this person as we can. You see, Piranesi, I've met this person, this person you call 16. Then, one day, somebody new suddenly stands in the first northeastern hall. Piranesi calls him the Prophet. The Prophet bluntly tells Piranesi about the true background of the house. This is way beyond Piranesi's comprehension at first but it is the pivotal point from where the mystery unravels in a very realistic and mind-boggling way. I won't go into these details because I don't have to retell the whole book. In the end, when Piranesi, whose real name is Matthew Rose Sorensen, has to decide if he shall go back to what he calls the other world. His family, who believed him gone for good, very much wants to see him again. The police officer, Sarah Raphael, who found Matthew in this parallel world, tells him that the other world, the one we call the real world, is not always a pleasant place. There's a lot of sadness. It's not like here. Later on, she observes, I love the quiet here. No people. The first diary entry in the other world is dated 26 November 2018. And the main character is Piranesi and Matthew Rose Sorensen. Although Piranesi is always with me, but of Rose Sorensen, I have only hints and shadows. He learns how to return to the house on his own and how to find his way back again. During a walk, Piranesi recognizes people in the crowd because their faces belong to some of the statues in the house. This suggests that there are many many parallel worlds. I would classify this book as literary fantasy, but it's also a mystery. 
It is intricately composed and beautifully executed. The complete immersion of Piranesi in his world of the house is very believable. For instance, his perception of there being only two living people in the world is touching. When he finally agrees to go to the other world, he asks Sarah Raphael what it's like. She says, there are more people. A lot more, I asked. Yes. As many as 70, I asked. Yes, she said. How do you know that there are more than 70 people? I asked. Have you counted them yourself? This story will not leave my head and every time I leave through the pages and read some of my underlinings, I see something new. I am in awe of Susanna Clarke's craftsmanship and her rich and profound imagination. Right after finishing this read, I was very enthusiastic, but I didn't really know how to rate this book. While scripting this video, I realized that apart from a few major unrealistic twists, this book is simply perfect. So I'm rating it 98 points out of 100, a very solid five star. This makes Piranesi a serious contender for my book of the year. Thank you very much for watching this video. Until we meet again at Dutch Greybeard. Mm -hmm.